contrast of styles. <laughs> uh, huge heart by an English team that was down to 14 players pretty early. Like they're incredible. That's incredible run they've been on. They're an incredible team. Got great structures. Um, hard to combat when they get into those those zones around the line out and the driving mall and and uh, we knew from six months ago that if we were going to play them we were going to have to develop our unstructured game we were going to have to play something different and take some risks and luckily i got a captain that drove that and had the whole team behind her and i don't think this team will ever go back to not doing that and now same question for yourself for me yeah thoughts on the match oh, exhausting um it's funny um even though we were actually down from for most of the game i never felt like we were under the pump, like we were going to lose. Um, and uh, I don't say that based on on the opposition. I say it based on uh, the, the calmness that our 15 players out there on the field showed. Um, we knew where the space was. We just had to get the ball there. And we knew that their line-out drive was killing us. So we tried to keep the ball in and, you know, not concede any penalties. Um, and it took 80 minutes and it took 23. Didn't matter if we had a yellow card. Um, yeah, just, I, I guess, it, to sum up the game, I'm, I'm just really proud of, of all 32 of us, really. I wish you'd send that message up to us in the coaching box. <laughs> <laughs> that you weren't worried. It's OK, it's OK, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Open it up to the floor now. Uh, I'll pass around a microphone, say your name, which publication you're with. Ollie here from New Sub Wayne. Congratulations. Um, obviously, and, and Ruahe just alluded to their line out drive and how much success they had with it. Heading into that last line out, could you just talk us through what was going through your mind as they, they set it up with, with time up? Yep. Um, we had a strategy probably for six months about don't give them any line outs and no penalties. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, no, we, we took a risk, that last line out. So the message was sent down, get someone up. And that someone was Jonah Nanwu, who's, who's a phenomenal athlete, good under pressure, and she did the business. Hey, um, hey. Could you just talk about the, the, the turnaround in that second half in particular? I suppose it felt like England had the upper hand in, in the first half, but the, the turnaround from you guys in the, in the second, could you just talk to that and, and what you think drove that? Yeah, I think one of the um, great strengths of our team is the ability to learn from the first half um, and know exactly what we're going to do next and how to find solutions. And we did that in the second half and we've, we've done that you know, most of our games, um, and it showed right from the start when we scored straight off the bat. Um, we know that our spark plugs are going to come on and ignite the field, and, you know, there's only however many minutes left in the tank, so everyone just goes hard and empties the tank. Um, we're, we're a type of team who loves to play fast and loves to play even faster come the second half, and um, I think that's why we never felt that scoreboard pressure, even though we were down. Um, yeah, does that answer? Is it? Yeah. Hey, Ruhe, it's Joe here from Stuff. How's it going? Um, could you just try your best to summarise what impact Wayne has had on this team in the last six or seven months? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, I actually remember the first camp Smithy came to, and I think the first night of the first camp we had a kicking strap session and it was the complete opposite to <laughs> what I had individually been told um, and I was like well and I remember when Smithy introduced himself to us and he said that he's never followed the herd and he always does things differently and that's exactly the type of coach he is 
um, as many people will know. And I think the hardest challenge for us as players was wasn't the um, you know the skill stuff; it was the mindset stuff. He challenged us, you know, when opposition presented certain pictures. He said, "How can we score off this?" Which is it's hard when you're not used to thinking like that. Um, and he definitely doesn't do things by the book, so that's the greatest influence that Smithy's had on our team and and the players that they selected um, throughout all our campaigns this year have showed that courage, the courage to play different, and that's what's so exciting about the style of game that we play. Um, it's definitely not the norm. It's very exciting for the viewers, um, and it's fun to play. So, yeah. Do you want to stay involved in some capacity? Do I want to? to stay? Oh, me? You're yeah. looking at me, Joseph? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to follow, like, I said to the team this morning, I love them. I'm proud of them. I, I've never been more proud of a team, win or lose. Like, end of the day, I didn't really care today, win or lose. Uh, it's better to win than lose, but um, we just wanted to go out and play and be true to yeah. our DNA and, and what we've been trying to do. Um, I'm not going to stay involved, but I'll be following these women the rest of their careers because it's not just the the 23 that ended up on the field today. We have some, I think, global superstars in the other nine that are going to come through. We've got young props, young midfielders. Um, there's young wingers out there. There's uh, Honestly, there are so many good kids coming through in, in women's rugby that it is unbelievable. And I just think the future is great. So I'm going to be following them, but, but yeah, from a different position. <laughs> and Ruha, I should just ask, like, obviously, there's, well, what's next for this team? Like, it's difficult to know what the schedule is really for next year. But how do you, what what needs to happen to ensure that we sort of capitalise on this moment and this whole tournament? Yeah, well, <clears throat> that's a good question. Um, more games, more fixtures. Um, for most of us, you know, the next competition is Super Rugby Opaki. Um, it would be great to see that expand from, from what it was this year. Um, maybe, you know, playing against some of the Australian teams and the Pacific teams, turning in a bridge the gap between uh, Farah Palmer Cup and Black Ferns. Um, we've got, you know, the introduction of the Pac-4 competition now, which is great, and Laurie O'Reilly, but it would be awesome to get more regular fixtures against these Northern Hemisphere teams. Um, you know, as we've seen, they, they're they different to the style of play of game they play is very different to ours. Um, and more resources, I guess, thrown, at, thrown into women's rugby so that, you know, we can be taken a bit more seriously and actually put more time and effort into into our footy. Yeah, I, I think to back that up, um, I never thought in a hundred years you'd be standing out in the middle of Eden Park and 40,000 people would be chanting Black Ferns. So something's like, there's something ignited this country around women's rugby and we've got to, we've got to make it count. And we've got to make it count with seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds who all play ripper, but when they go to high school, there's no team or no coach, and they'll go and play other sports, and they might come back into it, like a Lou or a um, Theresa Fitzpatrick, but many won't, but that's what we've got to get right. And like that was the most phenomenal rugby moment of my life, standing out there and hearing that crowd chanting the names of these girls, so it, was, it was phenomenal. Hey guys, uh, Alex Chapman, TV3. Um, Wayne, based on that, you've worked with several fully professional teams. What could this team do if they were to be fully professional? Um, well, they're going to be. So they have professionalised the game already in New Zealand. It's, it's got to grow, clearly. I think we've got the best athletes in the world for the game. What worries me is if we don't surge ahead now, um, you've got highly professionalised French and English teams. You've got some of those other Northern Hemisphere teams are going to follow suit. Um, there'll be Olympic 
um, funding come in for a lot of you know Canada and USA, and we've got to stay up with the pack and keep these wonderful athletes providing what they're providing now on the field. Ru, uh, you mentioned that the calmness and the confidence that you had on the field even when you're behind on the scoreboard. Where does that come from? I think it comes from a few different places. Firstly, um, you know, the trust that we have in each other. Um, but also the freedom that we have to play. And one of the great things about our semi-final was we won, but we didn't get to play our game. And we knew that today we would be able to play our game. And we play our best rugby when our minds are free and we play with fun, play with joy. And um, I guess that's where the, the calmness really came from. Hey, Kim here from TVNZ. Well, how you kind of talked about the future and, and Wayne's touched on this a bit, but do you think you've begun, begun to comprehend what you've done for the game this tournament? I don't think so, to be honest. Um, like, the level of support that we've received from, from our country has been really overwhelming, and as players... None of us really expected this. It's still quite surreal to turn up to Eden Park. You know, we've been here three times now and it's been sold out two times. To walk out of the tunnel and you can't even think because it's so loud. The crowd is so loud. And I never, ever would have thought when they announced that the Rugby World Cup was here in New Zealand that we would get this level of fan engagement because we're not really that type of country. And, and in the past, when we've had the opportunity to travel abroad and play teams like England and France in their home countries, their fans are next level. So I was, I was quite worried when you know, they announced that we had a home World Cup. But the way that the countries turned out, um, you couldn't have scripted it. It's been unreal. And, and as a team, we spoke about, you know, part of our vision was wanting to inspire the nation, um, and I think that's what we've done, and it's still quite funny saying that because we've, we've achieved it, and it's quite a hard thing to do, but it's it's just unreal. We got time for one, maybe two quick questions. I, we got to open the mix zone soon. I, Did you I'd have just a like to add to that? Um, we've got a very special woman here. Uh, she's not just a great rugby player, she, she's an, one of the best leaders I've ever had in a team. She's smart, clearly. She's a lawyer. Speaks two languages. Um, I'd like to see her up for a Stein Lager Award. There you go. <laughs> I think she is, she's led this team phenomenally. She's played a phenomenal brand of rugby. She's been consistently best player on the field and uh, yeah, I, I just I give her all the credit she's been outstanding Wayne I also just wanted to check on how Porsche's doing and a word on Aisha coming in obviously a lot earlier than, than planned well last time I saw Porsche was jumping all over me I think she's alright <laughs> <laughs> uh, no but I don't want to trivialise that because no she wasn't she wasn't great so she's she didn't pass HIA, she was, yeah, I don't know if she remember much of the game. She was playing so well too, it was, a, it was really disappointing, but she'll recover, but she's not handy at the moment. She looked pretty lovely when I saw her. Um, Aidy Rikihana from Marae TV here. Um, Ruahe, just, Wayne's just mused upon you, but your musings on Wayne and how, um, I mean, you're going to lose quite a gift here and you've got to move on to something else. So um, you've done something extraordinary here today. Congratulations. But what next? What next for the team? What next for you? Honestly? I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're running out of time and those questions were both already answered. So I'm going to pass it up to the front here. Um, and just this will be the last question. I'm really sorry. 
Wayne, just, just quickly, you've seen a lot of rugby over the years. Um, where, does that, where does this achievement rank for you in terms of everything you've done? And, and also, you know, where does that, the quality of that game sit in rugby you've seen over the years? Look, I've, these are hard questions because, um, you know, I was head coach of Crusaders when we were up here and won in, in 98 against all odds against the champion Blues team. No one gave us a chance. I don't think many people gave us a chance today. Um, yeah, pro probably for me, this will be this will go down as one of the great experiences of my life. Like I love these women. I love what they've had to do to get here, uh, but I love the way they've bought into everything that we've done. And you know, we've got Graham Henry. Mike Cron, Wesley, Whitney, Alan Bunting, we got I've got a great group of coaches here and everything that they put into it, these women buy into. And they go out and they and they provide it on the field. And whether we're up or down, they keep being true to what we're trying to do. And it's not just me. We've got great coaches, got great girls. This is one of the great experiences of my life.